Every Super 73 e-bike exists in a state of flux and constant evolution. As a young company, we are always exploring how to further develop our engineering and testing processes. And as we innovate day after day, we want to share our product updates with the Super Squad as quickly as possible. When we launched the Super 73 RX, we put it through quite a bit of strenuous testing. Parker here at Super 73 must have landed with the motor fully running 30 times or so, and we weren't having issues. Now, we can test till the cows come home, but until those bikes are out there in the world and we're getting real world feedback from our customers, there's new ways that these bikes can operate that we've never even foreseen before. And so what we had was a small number of these motors failing. And as much as that was really discouraging for our team, we were selling tens of thousands of bikes, many of which you know are still out on the road. And you can see these posts here, they're saying, hey, I've crossed a thousand miles, I'm having no issues. The truth is a lot of the riders with the V1 one motor will never actually experience this clacking noise or, or that motor slipping in the way that other riders do because of how they use the bike. This is the carrier plate. This carries planetary gears and this is where the power from the motor gets delivered to your wheel. So this takes all of the torque. With this new powertrain we requested tons more power and torque from the motor and we found during strenuous ride testing that this guy started failing because of this extra power. If you really just ride this thing hard, then, then you're gonna get this to fail. And the failure mode is really this guy just bending. And when it bends, the poles inside here that give you the freewheeling function will actually start interfering with each other and they'll start destroying each other. So really the thing that changed was, was our power output. We upped the power, this became a weak spot. So these are the two versions of our carrier plate. You can see the thickness here. So increasing this thickness gives us a lot more stability and prevents this kind of flexing action, which then destroys the, the internals of this carrier plate. It was just reacting to, we have all of this power now. What do we do with it? We just got to make the internals stronger. When you have literally dozens of thousands of bikes out on the road, you are going to experience problems and the happy customers aren't going to be the ones going on Reddit and posting their frustrations. And we totally understand frustrations and it's really helped us to become a better company because of that. But with that, there's sort of this idea of like, ooh, if I get a, a V1 motor, I'm going to have trouble. The truth is no, we haven't been shipping any V1 motors since summer of 2020. So when those issues started to kind of pop up, we halted those shipments. We changed the way that we were making these motors. So no, if you're ordering a Super 73, you're not getting one of the V1 motors. Again, if you have problems with the V1 motor, we're more than happy to help. But the truth is the V1 fiasco is definitely behind us. We learned from this. That's kind of the most important thing. And our community helped us learn. And we've become stronger and better because of it. And there will be moments in the future where we'll be learning again. I think the way that we're a community brand, we're trying to keep ourselves open to constantly learning and constantly understanding how our riders need to use their bikes, how far they're pushing them, what they're doing with them. And that helps us to make a better product in the long run. So we really appreciate the feedback. I, I think, you know, moving forward, we're gonna make it more clear of what's happening inside Super 73 during these times. In 2020, we were dealing with the demand issues, the supply chain issues, and those V1 motors on top of it. And so that became kind of this chaotic cyclone of making sure that our customers were happy, making sure that we could continue to produce bikes, that we could actually sell them and get them here. So there may still be some things in the future we have to adjust and change and grow, but that's kind of part of this process is, is understanding what it is that your needs are and how we can meet them better. So moving forward, we're gonna have a ton of open communication and I hope that this channel has been proving that to you. I'm excited to show you what we have in store and just excited to keep all of you riding.